Alléluia. Papa, c'est toi. Papa, c'est toi, Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose s'accomplit. Papa, c'est toi, Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose, et la chose, et la chose s'accomplit. Papa, c'est toi, somebody help me. Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose s'accomplit. Papa, c'est toi. Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose, la chose s'accomplit. Papa, c'est toi. Papa, c'est toi. Qui dit. Et la chose s'accomplit. Et listen what I'm saying. You got to say, This is you who says the word. Because if you don't believe the word that he says, that word cannot take life and form. Go ahead. Papa, c'est toi. Papa, c'est toi. C'est toi seul qui dit un mot. Et la chose, ça. Et la chose, et la chose, et la chose. Papa, c'est toi. Papa, c'est toi. C'est toi, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose, et la chose s'accomplit. Papa, c'est toi, papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose s'accomplit. Yes, Lord. Pas c'est toi qui dis vraiment un mot. Et la chose s'accomplit. Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose s'accomplit. Somebody say. C'est toi, papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Et la chose, et la chose s'accomplit. Daddy, it's you who says. Daddy, it's you who says the word. You say only one word. And it surely, and it surely comes to pass. Come to pass. Daddy, it's you. Daddy, it's who you says a word. who says a word. And it surely, and it surely come, come to pass. pass. Daddy, 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 it's you. Daddy, daddy. Who Non, 
Now listen to me. Écoute ce que la voix de l'Éternel veut dire. Il y avait un homme qui était un centurion. There was a man who was a centurion. He saw in the Lord something that people until then never saw. Il a vu dans l'Éternel quelque chose que des gens n'ont pas pu voir. Alors que Jésus venait de guérir un lépreux, just as so the Lord just heal a leprous, he came to Capernaum. Et sur son chemin vers Capernaum, voici qu'il y avait un centurion qui avait besoin de quelque chose dans la vie de son serviteur. There was a centurion who had a need, who had a need in the life of his servant. And as he spoke to the Lord Jesus, alors qu'il se met à parler à Jésus Christ, voici qu'il entendait une voix contraire. Et alors qu'il entendait une voix contraire, Jésus lui dit que ta foi ne chancelle pas. While he was speaking to the Lord, he heard something contrary, a contrary voice. And the Lord told him, do not let your faith, do not let your trust flip over. Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Daddy, it is you who says a word. And surely it comes to pass. Daddy, that is you who says a word. And it surely comes to pass. That is you who says a word. And it surely La parole de l'Éternel, the word of the Lord. The word God says in the book of Genesis that there was a void. It might be a void in your spirit, it might be a void in your heart, a void in your family. But you see, the word of God says, when he saw the void, then he spoke plentiness. Hallelujah. When he saw the void, then he spoke plentiness. Quand le Seigneur a vu le vide dans ta vie, le vide dans la création, le vide dans l'atmosphère, c'est alors qu'il a parlé, qu'il a prononcé l'accomplissement. Et la parole de Dieu dit, « Let there be light. » And the word of God said, « Let there be light. » Que la lumière soit. Dis, 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 dis que la lumière soit. C'est « Let there be light. » Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Listen. Listen. Light did not come because God wanted it. Although he wanted light. Are you following what I'm saying? Light did not come because God was able to do so. Although he's able to do so. Light did not come because God has the power to do so. Although he has the power to do so. Light came because he Said spoke. Okay. There are situations you cannot simply sit around and wait for somebody to just say a prayer for you. You got to speak, speak it. That to somebody you got to speak it. You got to speak it. Daddy, daddy is you who says a word, and it surely comes to pass. 
Father, we bless your name, we honor you for all that you do in our midst. C'est vrai, Seigneur, nous te bénissons pour ce que tu fais dans nos vides. Pour ce que tu fais dans nos vides, dans notre présence, en notre présence. We bless you, Lord God, for your goodness and for your mercy. We pray, Lord God, that you will saturate us, that you will keep us in that will. Open our heart, open our mind, and open our understanding to seize what is of you, from you. Spirit of God, do your work in our midst and then let us be the ground that receives, that understands, and that brings forth fruit, and fruit in abundance. To the glory of the Lord, now and evermore, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord today that he has provided unto us is Dis seulement un mot. You know, when he, you see on the screen? So this morning, as I was writing it, he, he told me to say that in French. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now you're going to say that with me. Dis Seulement un mot. Pastor Martin, c'est dit seulement un mot. Lady Michelle, c'est dit seulement, seulement. Ah, Alléluia. Alléluia. Amen. You're the one watching. You can say dit. Seulement un mot. All it means is just say a word. Seulement. Seulement. Alléluia. 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 So we bless the name of God for what he does in our lives. The word of God comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Alléluia. We're going to start from verse 1 to give the context, the parameters of what happened in the life of the centurion. Hallelujah. So chapter 18, uh, chapter 18, uh, sorry, but chapter 8, uh, sorry, not chapter 18. Chapter 8, we're going to start from verse 1. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Yes. When he was come down, mm -hmm. the... When he was come down from the mountain, mm -hmm. great multitude followed him. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Hallelujah. Amen. And there came a leper, worshipped him. Saying, mm -hmm. Lord, if thy wilt, mm -hmm. thou canst make me clean. Now, let me tell you something. That leper came with a need. But before to say a need, what did he do? He worshipped. Hallelujah. He came with a need. But before to say a need, he acknowledged the one who's able to fulfill his need. Now let me tell you some secret of that word. He put a condition of his faith because he did not say, Lord, I believe you can heal me. Hallelujah. He said, Lord, if thou wilt. You know, the last time somebody said, if, the Lord also told him, if you believe. Amen. But in this case, the Lord did not answer back by telling him, if you believe. Let's read again. And behold, There came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And verse 3, what he says? Verse 3. 
And Jesus put forth. And his Jesus hand, put forth his hand. His hand and touched him, and touched him, saying, saying, "I will. I will be thou clean." Be thou clean. And what happened? And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Hallelujah. Amen. As I said, there was another man who came. He says, Lord, if thou, and the Lord says, if thou too, if you believe. But in this case, he didn't respond unto him by saying, if you, hallelujah. He just put out his hand and touched him and he answered him saying, I will. Why did the Lord say, I will, and did not respond on the if? Because he worshipped him. Your worship is what asserts and confirms that you trust in him. Hallelujah. He said, for the father seeketh for true worshiper. And he already said, Seek ye the Lord, and he will grant you, or uh, delight thyself in the Lord, and he will grant you the desire of your heart. So what did he do? He delighted himself in the Lord. And the desire of his heart was granted immediately. Now, worship is not the words and the position that you take. Worship is the sincerity that is found in your heart and rise in your spirit. When he saw the Lord Jesus, he did not have a doubt of who he was. The first thing that he did, he acknowledged his kingdom and kingship and he says, I worship you. Some of why sometimes you don't have the answer for what you're looking for is because your worship is not true. Hallelujah. For it says he seeketh what? True worshiper who will what? Worship him how? In spirit and? Give me back the word, please. Matthew 8, verse 3. Uh -huh. And Jesus put forth his hand. And Jesus put forth his hand. And touched him. Listen, there are two things that the Lord will do in this chapter. In one sentence, he will put forth his hand. In another sentence, he will put forth his word. Hallelujah. But when Christ put forth his hand, let me tell you something. The position of worship of that leprous was a position that was not clean and that was not honorable. Because remember, the lepers at those times did not have the right to be among the people. Remember that. And what Christ did... Not, not only they do not have the right, but the people do not also have the right to touch a leper. Some of your condition, you need an actual physical deblocage. Breakthrough. Some of them, even though you have entered the spiritual realm, and you have had peace by Christ wants to give you an actual physical tangible something that you can see and then you will say ah this one he has answered me he said when you pray believe and you will receive he didn't say only believe hallelujah and when you receive he says you go further he says ask and it shall be given unto you, and your job will be asked, it shall be given unto you, and your joy will be complete. So if you have the spirit of Christ, you, have, you should have the fruit of the Holy Ghost, which is joy. But then now, he wants you to, to push in a place, or to arrive in a place where you are not only taking from the spiritual, but he also giving you from 
are you following what I'm saying? So the Lord tells to that neighbor, <laughs> because he was a neighbor, <laughs> amen, to that man, he tells him, I will. And he stretched his hand instead of speaking the word. Somebody of a situation need some tangible action in your life. That's why you may be praying for something. And then somebody comes with you and pray, 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 pray with you. And then you can sense that there is a shift. But after when you leave, <laughs> hallelujah, the needs remind you that there is an actual physical need that has not yet been met. Continue. Verse, verse, um, verse 4. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, shew thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now, I want you to take this whole context, which are two separate different stories, okay? They are completely different. But I want you to take it as one line of the Spirit of God. Because the one doing the work is Christ. Amen? And I want you to see it as one line. The first line is that you come with your diseases. Your spiritual diseases. Your emotional diseases. Your, your, your physical diseases. You come with all your diseases to the Lord. But when you come, what you have to learn to do is to worship him in truth first. Hallelujah. Once you have started to worship Christ in the beauty of holiness of his holiness then whatever you ask even if you put a if on it i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you see it was not a if of a doubt it was lord i just came to worship you but it is in your hand to give it is in your hand to withdraw hallelujah I have a need, but in that need, if you want to give now, hallelujah. It's not a prayer where I'm looking to receive 10 years down from the road. It's not a prayer where I'm looking to receive two years after. It's not a prayer of the prophecy that says, this next year, what was it that? This time next year. <laughs> hallelujah. Why next year when we are at this time? Sometimes the Lord will want you to wait. Sometimes he will want you to tarry. Sometimes he will want you to toil. But at the at time, he himself does not want you to wait. He said, I will. We're going to do it now. Am I right? Is that the word of God says? The word of God says that. Put it again. Put it again. Put it again. The word of God says, and Jesus said unto him. No, no, no. But this one. Verse 2. Verse, verse, verse. Verse 2, okay. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And verse 3, and Jesus first put forth his hand, touch him. Now let me give you a picture. Brother, come. The word of God in him the Bible says is power. Hallelujah. And because the word of God in him is power, there is also something in the word of God that says that uh, the word or the tradition of man chokes the power of the word of God in you. So you have the word of God, but you have also the tradition of man. And sometimes you're struggling. So that guy was struggling. So when he came, the Lord Jesus said, first thing, action. The Lord does not speak. First, the Lord does an action. So the Lord put forth his hand and touched him. What happened? It transferred into him entire healing first. He transferred into him entire restoration first. It transferred into him entire regeneration first. 
And then when he touched him and he speak, he says what? I will. It means that above all your your failure, above all your doubt, above all your your limitation, because you came to worship me. Hallelujah. Because you listen, he was not worthy of worship. He was not worthy of entering the place of the saints of the congregation. He was not worthy of stepping into the place. But Christ did not look at his unworthiness. Christ looked at his position in his heart. Now the people were looking at the flesh. I what I'm saying. Tell to somebody, get your eye off my flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were looking at his flesh, but Christ was looking at his soul and at his spirit. And he says, this is one of the sons of Abraham. And he says, he put forth his hand. Touch him. You see, by a touch, there is a consecration. Are you what I'm saying? The Lord did not just heal him. The Lord consecrated him for the work. Consecrated him for the call. Consecrated him for the task. Consecrated him for the anointing. And when it touched him, then it says, you are consecrated. You are restored. You are filled. You are fulfilled. You are completed. Then go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it fulfilled in him an entire cycle. 360. Please, stand up. Stand up. From where you are, you want to do a 360 cycle, meaning your life are turned around. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see? What you don't get is that the spirit of God is a shifting and then dip and, and, and oh Jesus Christ help me. The Lord Jesus is shifting and cleaning up those things that has been grabbing on you. Those things that has been holding you back. Those chains that was holding you. God says I will 360. I will. It was not a matter of whether you are worthy. The leprous was not worthy. But he understood. All he had to do was to worship. Say, God, I worship you. <laughs> For the Lord is near. And he said, if you draw near me, I will draw near you. Why were we separated from him because of sin? But he does not look at our sin by saying you are filthy. Hallelujah. He says, if you draw near me, I will draw near you. But before you speak, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to concentrate. And when I consecrated you, then I say, go. As a testimony. Now you see, you are not. Give, give me verse 4. And Jesus said unto him, See that thou tell no man. Very pay attention. But go thy ways, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony. Let me explain this. The Lord says, When he shifted you, you do not need to tell the testimony because you become the testimony. Hallelujah. Because now, the same people who saw you in the state that were not honorable, the same people who saw you in the state that were low, the same people who saw you in the state that was broken, the same people who saw you in the state that was lamentable, they see you and they say, what happened? Now notice this. He said, go back to the same people who rejected you. Go back to the same people who denied you. Because the priests were the ones who were appointed to define who was worthy or not to stay among the. So 
So they identify him, they screen him, and when they finish, they say, you are not worthy, get out. But then the Lord came. When the Lord came, he consecrated him. And he said, I want you to go back to the same people who rejected you. So you will be a testimony unto them. You came the first time. They refused you. And then you thought. You know, sometimes if you want to do business, you go to somebody and the person look at you. The person thinks that you don't have anything. So the person doesn't even listen to you. And sometimes they tell you, when you have money, come back. <laughs> But let me tell you something. Christ said that he said, show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded. That man was broken. Are you know what I'm saying? Because he was leprous, so he could not have anything. He was living outside the camp. But when Christ touched him, he brought in his life restoration of even finances. Are you know what I'm saying? He, oh. 360. Because by the time Christ touched him, he had to offer the gift that he could not offer before. How did he get that gift? That money to buy that gift to buy the offerings, to bring the offerings that was required to him, unto him. What it means is that Christ restored him his position and his social status. Quit believing that Christ wants you to only be holy and die and go heaven. No, he wants you to occupy till he comes. You see, this priest, they had no issue. They were taking all the offerings. They were taking all the gifts. They were sitting in the synagogue, but they were not helping the brother. Hallelujah. They were not helping the brother. But when Christ saw his need, he saw he has both emotional need. Because you see, rejection brings what? Emotional distress. He had health need, medical need. He had financial need. Hallelujah. So at once, the Lord restored him full time in a 360 cycle. And now he says, go, present thyself. Shoe thyself. But this time when he come, He's not asking something. He's giving something. Say, I'm giving it. I'm lending. I'm giving it. I'm lending. The position of the borrower has been broken. The position of the debtor has been broken. Now he goes in, show himself and give. Is restored. How long did it take? The Bible says immediately. I don't know if you know what immediately means. Hallelujah. Immediately means that before you breathe, it happen. Hallelujah. Because when you breathe, you do. So by the time you do, it happen. And <laughs> so I'm saying. So before even you breathe, the things happen. And this line is a story that Christ, please have a seat. This line is a story that Christ writes, uh, writes in your life intentionally. He says, I will. Now, let me tell you something. Sometimes you can watch on the TV and they tell you that. Give a $1,000 offering. 
that will get you a breakthrough. But you broke. And you give it. Hallelujah. But you see, in the case of this guy, the Lord demonstrated that he did not need his finances. He needed his heart. And when you worship Christ in spirit and in truth, he says, I cannot let you go unless I touch you immediately. Because there is a need in your life that needs to be met when? Say, Lord, thank you for meeting all my needs now, now, in glory, now. The word of God says, he's the one who meets all your needs, provides all of your needs in what? In riches, in? First, seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So when you seek holiness, when you seek righteousness, when you seek sanctification, when you seek purity, the Lord in turn, hallelujah, will not let you go broke. That's not true. The disciple came to him. They said, we have left all to seek you. Amen? What did the Lord tell them? That truly, there is nothing that you have left for my sake that you will not receive back how many times? Do you know why the Lord wants to bless you back? Because he wants you to keep on growing his kingdom. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't grow the kingdom of God with depths. Get it? You don't grow the kingdom of God with credit. Get it? You know, <laughs> there was a sister, I won't tell her name, but there was a sister who took some of the stuff that we have. She went to give so that people can buy. And then they were supposed to buy before to receive. But they took it and they said, we're going to buy and, and, and give the money at the end of the month. And I thought this is the same way we do in Africa. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I said, that's how we do it in Africa. You got to leave it. Because, because what I'm trying to say is that God is not wanted you to accumulate credit, but accumulate wealth. You, you follow what I'm saying? He does not want you to be materialist. He wants you to be prosperous. Prosper is to enlarge the kingdom of God. You don't take it to put on in your pocket. You take it to spread the kingdom. And the Lord stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will. This penetrates me because he does not put any condition on nothing just because he worshipped him. And he worshipped him empty-handed. But when he left, he left filled, full, and complete. There were times when people went just, you know, Lord Jesus, help us. Somebody would say, ah, when I was younger, I remember my mom would say, let's go to church. And I would tell her, I don't have growth. <laughs> I have nothing to put on. But meanwhile, I have something to put on. What I was trying to say, I have nothing new because I already put on the first one that the people already saw. So if I go again in church with the same thing, they will see that I'm poor. <laughs> so we got to buy new clothes. Foolishness. And my mom would tell me, if you don't go to church, you ain't going to eat either. <laughs> so your salvation... And your belly is conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You want to have food in your belly, you got to be served first. <laughs> Amen. But what I'm trying to say is that you do not need to have in order to worship. When you worship and Christ says you don't. There was a lady who had nothing, a widow, right? All he had, all she had was what? A penny, a little coin. Coin, 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 coin. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> a little penny. And she went in. And Jesus Christ also saw many people who were rich. He saw Adam shift. He saw Nancy Pelosi. He saw Biden. He saw enter. He saw all of them. Trump, all of them. And they were all rich. But then he saw a widow. Meaning a husband have passed away. You know when you are poor, we say you're dead. When you are rich, we say you passed away. <laughs> Amen. When people talk about rich people, oh yeah, yeah, le monsieur là, oui, il est décédé. Am I right? When the person is rich, oh, il a rendu l'âme. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, so he saw all of them and the lady gives in the penny. You know, with the penny, you don't, you don't buy light. You don't buy electricity. You don't pay for food for the church. Are you what I'm saying? With the penny, you, you do nothing with that. But Christ used that penny and deposited it into the bank of heaven and he gave interest. And interest multiply to the point that the Lord says, this one. I gave to her my approval. That's what you need. You need to be approved of God. And to be approved of God is your worship. Now the story continues. It doesn't stop there. Let's continue. Matthew Verse 5. 8, mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus was, was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him. Verse 6. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of, of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So as I said, there are two stories that are completely separated, okay? But I want you to see it as a one line. First, you come to worship. And Christ transforms you. But then you remember that there are situations in your family. There are situations in your life. There are situations in your marriage, in your business, that needs also a turnaround. Hallelujah. Now, what Christ wants you to remember is that your position of worship has granted you an approval. Hallelujah. But then now, for the things that has to touch other people, you have to demonstrate another level of faith. That level of faith is not based on necessarily how much you know Christ, but how much you trust that is able to accomplish it. Because you can know him and still fail to trust that he wants to accomplish it. Are you what I'm saying? So, he tells him, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and deal with your affairs. I will come and deal with your state. I will come and deal with your family. I will come and deal with your finances, with your health. I will come. I'm coming. So that's a promise. But look what happened. Continue, verse 8. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come unto my under my roof, 
but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, the centurion was a Roman guy. You have to understand the context of the time. In the time, a Jew and a Roman, or a Jew and a stranger, were not met to be together. Are you know what I'm saying? That's why Peter, when he went to the uh, to Cornelius, remember, he went to Cornelius. He told him that of truth, it is a sin for us Jew to come into the house of an unbeliever. Hallelujah! But God has spoken to me. Then, therefore, He has changed my mind, and I can enter to the work. So, by, by then, it was not right for a centurion to ask to a Jew to come in his house, even though he was the Lord, even though he was the Lord. Now, let me explain this for your life. The people in your life who do not want to give their life to Christ, who do not want to have their life transformed, the Lord said there is still room. That room depends upon you. Hallelujah. How much you want to speak into the life and ask the Lord to do something. Continue to read, please. And we have the word. Nine. Uh -huh. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he, and he doeth thee, it. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you two things. Worship, your worship, we unlock. The, your worship, we get you approved. But then, you need more to function. You need more to be able actually to occupy. You need more to continue the work of God, to continue to please Christ. But now you will need your faith. Hallelujah. You will need your faith. Now see Christ. Christ was, this is how it works. The centurion told him, Lord, I do not see it worthy. Because of the state of my race, of my lineage, for you to come in my house. But say a word. How did that centurion know that Christ can say a word and he happens? Because until then, nobody had that revelation. No one. To the point that the Lord confirms by saying what? He hasn't found such a faith nowhere in Israel. Are you what I'm saying? Even Abraham, who believed the thing he did not see, did not have that revelation. That all you have to do was to just to speak a word. But how did that man understood? He understood based on his own position. The work he does, the occupation he has, in his occupation and the work he does, he can move things, he can speak to people, he can give order. And he realized that if he has position and can give order, then Christ who had a greater position can give order. So what makes his faith was the realization of who he is first. To tap into who Christ is. Are you following me? Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. You're managing eggs and pepper. You know in Africa, we do eggs and pepper and we sell it at the, at the, at the, at the corner of the road. So you know I'm saying you boil eggs and then you do ground pepper and then you go on the road, you put that ground pepper in a, a paper 
okay? And then you attach them in a plate, you're there. Somebody come, he buys egg, and then he takes the pepper. Amen? All he does, he takes the egg, he puts in the pepper, he eats. That's all. Now, let me tell you something. When you are able to think that you are able to boil eggs, to present yourself to sell it, then you have in you the ability to make wealth. Because you say, we don't say uh, you have millionaire. We say you are a millionaire. What does it mean? It is not what you have in your hands. It's what you have in you. Because you can take away from somebody all the wealth. But if he is a millionaire, he will recreate that wealth. Because the root of that wealth is not outside of him. It's inside him. Does it make sense? That's why the Lord says that if you are faithful in the little, you will be faithful in the... Hallelujah. Why? Because it is inside of you. Your faithfulness does not depend upon what you see, but who you are. Hallelujah. So now Christ is starts speaking into your life. He says, if you can understand who you are and what you do, based on that truth, you can call from heaven and lose and it will be loosed. For whatever you say and you, whatever you bind on, earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on, earth will be lost in heaven. So Christ is asking you to understand your functionality in what you do in your everyday life. When you trust that I can write this, then I can become a writer. When you trust, I can buy this, then I can buy a land. Because the ability that is inside of you that Christ has approved is that ability that gives you to call what God says in one word and even thing, even though that thing is not, that thing will. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? The centurion saw who he was. And then he took from the example of who he all was to tell to Christ, because I can do this, then how much more can you? Now, when you have a, your, yes, your child, you give something to your child as a father or as a mother or as a parent. And when, or you give something to somebody. And when you give something to somebody, sometimes inside of you, there is joy. Are you know what I'm saying? And that joy makes you so joyful that you're not even expecting the person to just give you back anything. Just because you gave, you have that, that joy, that satisfaction. So Christ said, if you can understand that principle and ask me to that principle, you will trust asking me that I will be joyful to give you, so he will give you. Does it make sense? So what you will do here is to cause Christ to multiply joy. Because you know that when you give, you have joy. So on that basis of that truth, you say, Lord, I call on you. Do something. And then he says, I will. So your faith is how much you trust that the Lord will do it for you. A faith that will let Christ Jesus to be amazed. Can you imagine? Jesus Christ was amazed. <laughs> 
Imagine that. The one who knows all was amazed. That was how much faith that God had in him. He make a comparison first on who he is. And say, because I can do that, then you are able to do more. Now, I want you to think about those things. That the Lord gave you as position, as ability. I want you to think about them. If you are able to do what God told you to do in the little, I want you to think about them. He says, if you are able to do it, then you will be able to do whatever that presents before you. I read again. Stop telling to yourself, this one, I cannot do it. Hallelujah. Tell as much as Christ is in me, the word of God says in Philippians chapter what? Four, he says what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How much do you trust that the Lord will do it? You see, let me tell you something. Before, you didn't have a car. Even to have bus, it was, it was difficult. Yeah. Because some of you, you did not, you were not born in a milliardaire family, okay? You were born in just a family. <laughs> Amen. And when you were born, your own dad, the length he went, you passed him. Are you, you know what I'm saying? You got to put in your mind something. If when I was, I could not even imagine that I would buy my own car. Because when I look, all I see is brokenness. I could not even imagine that, you know, sometimes when you are little and or young and you have your first job, even if you are a stagiaire, which is an intern, uh, how is it like? Internship, right? Even if you are a stage, listen, the first salary they give you, even if it's like a, you know, in a, in French, it will be about thirty thousand French CFA, which is roughly, roughly fifty dollar. Okay, they give you fifty dollar a month. And you feel like you can buy the world. <laughs> Am I right? You see, Grace, she does a little work. And they give her something. And the first day, she went to the bank with her mom to open a bank account. And she had a bank card. <laughs> and she put the bank card in her purse. And when she walked with her purse on her shoulder, she walks like this. <laughs> By that bank account, there is no 5,000 inside. <laughs> but the way she likes that bank account, when she walks, she's like this. <laughs> Then, understand very carefully. Then she felt she has power to buy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't care how much she has in a bank account. All she knows, she got a bank account and a bank card. And that bank card is on her possession. So now she feels power. 
So one time she comes, she speaks to me. She says, hey, pastor. She comes in my ear. She says, hey, pastor. My, 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 my mama is uh, the birthday coming up. I, 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 and I'm thinking, there is nobody around us. Why are you speaking in my ear? <laughs> she wants to tell me the power she has. <laughs> That she can make plan, and she can make it happen, and that she can make preparation. That she can. Are you? Are you following? Saying the century of say, I know who I am, so you can do it. Say, say a word. <laughs> she called me. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. There you go. Hallelujah. So she said, I spoke to my dad to take me to go buy a cake for my mom. But daddy won't be able to make it because he will be a little busier. So can you take me to buy the thing? How was that? Wow. You see, she makes plain. Because she knows she has something. Christ sees it and he's amazed. When you start appreciating less what you have, that's how you go broke. Because you're thinking you have it. So for you, you have arrived. And yet, you still have to go. So we went to the store. She went in. She bought a cake. She came out. She checked out with the card. <laughs> and I was thinking, whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. But something happened. We were in the car driving. And she goes, I thought this girl was $8. I went there, it was $18. I'm like, I'm like okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, then, but, but then I gave her a watch for her mom, for her to give the gift, as a, as a gift for her mom. And I told her, the watch that, that, that I gave you to give your mom is $35. She said, I did not order it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But regardless, she still has a card in her, in her purse. That, that's, she has power. That's how you got to be. Whatever you may not believe or you may not think that you have, doesn't matter. Christ has it. He has it. For he's a God of all the earth. He so much has it that in the heaven you will walk. The Bible says you will walk on the street of what? So if you have problem with God on earth, you cannot go in heaven. Because when you arrive, you're offended. Why is it good everywhere like this? That's not, this is a waste. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Christ wants to change your mindset. Can you see yourself right now buying a private jet? No, that's not amen because you don't believe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see, I said, can you see? When you, when you see, you say, yes, aha. But when you say, amen, you like, Lord, let it be. If you will, it will be. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of faith can cause you to say a word through Christ. So, there's the challenge. From now on. From now on. Please. Stop repeating you are broke. Stop, please. As I took the example of her, the daughter, she did not have that much in the bank account. 
But she has plan. Are you what I'm saying? And she made those plans happen. And she organized. She didn't have a car to drive, but she found how to get there. And even more, when you go to some club, if you don't have a membership card, you cannot get in. But by the way, if she would have gone with the father, she would have come back just empty. Why? Because I think the car was with the mom. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He would have gone and then at the door, they say, your membership card. Hey, hey, I don't know. I don't have it. I said, but go back as you came. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they wanted to do a surprise so they cannot go and... Yeah, so the power of God in her life was working and was at work. And every time she saw challenge or she saw uh, impossibility or she saw obstacles or she saw limitation, she found a way around. That's the spirit of faith. Are you what I'm saying? You go, you make, for the word of God says, decree a thing and it shall be. I know the Lord who knows you. And the Lord that I know who knows you knows that in your life, you must say a word. You must decree a word. And he will establish that word. For the centurion says, I myself, I have under me. And when I say this, it happened. Hallelujah. So because myself, I said this, it happened. I look at you and I say, Lord, just say it. And the Bible says, the Lord said it and it happened. Why did the Lord say it? Because the centurion demonstrated that his case was, was, was valuable, was, was, was appealing. Even though he was a centurion. Even though he did not have any fellowship with the children of Abraham. Who you are. In Christ. Who are you in Christ? How much do you trust that Christ has deposited in you? Be ready. Be ready. And willfully trust that as much as you can do, Christ can do more. And all you have to say is Christ, Lord, because I can do this, then I know you can do more for me. And see the faithfulness of Christ in your life come to pass. Remember, the world will not give you a way to worship Christ. Follow, remember this one. I remember those days when my wife was about to work in a job. They told her, in here, you got to work this time, this time, this time, this time, this time, this time, and this time. And I told her, when you go, tell, tell them that in there, you will work this time, this time, this time, this time. And then she thought... Can I do that? <laughs> and I said, they make you believe that you need the salary from them. But in truth, they need the professional work from you. So if they play with your mind, they will make you believe that if you cannot do this way, you're going to be broke. But in fact, the reason why they hire you is because they could not find somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They could not find somebody. Sometimes people come to interview, they look at them, they talk, 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 and they're like, I don't want this one, I don't want this one, I don't want this one. And then they say, ah, this is this one. Do you think that they hire you because you're you, you pretty? No. Because they trust you have something that you can bring. We call it value. Uh, um, Value, added value. 
So you are not an employee. You are a professional what, partner or a professional worker. Or you sell your services. My spiritual daughter, she was hired in Washington, D.C. And in that company she was working, she had a very decent salary. And one day they were closing and they had to let her go. She was all over. What should I do? What should we do? And I said, stop. She said, but I said, listen, first and foremost, praise God. Okay. Let them people go. And now go look for a work that your, 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 your training did not, did not even train you in. She thought, but how do I do that? I said, go look for it. So she looked for the work. And she came, she said, okay, this, 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 this. I said, oh, all of this, the loss is not that. Take this one. She took it. And she went to the interview. And I told her, when you go, tell them you want 85000 a year. She said, hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm training you into the spiritual in order to you understand how you operate in the physical. And what I tell you is not what I want you to say is what I know that you are able to, to do. So she says, you know, she, she was winning anywhere like 40000 or 30000 a year. And you would jump from 30000 to 85000 Who are you? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then she went. Unfortunately for her, she didn't listen to the whole instruction. She went, she said, okay, I want 75,000. She did it out of her, uh, what do I call it? Like disbelief, unbelief, everything. And I said, okay, they're going to give her 75,000. And then she said, hey, I should have said 85,000. I said, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you see? They look your salary of 30,000. And you spoke a word. And that word, you have to understand spiritual principle. Hallelujah. You have to agree with spiritual principle. Lift up your hand. Father, I bless your name. I thank you for all of us. I thank you for the grace upon each one of us. I thank you, Lord God, for your word of truth upon each one of us. It is you who provides. It is you, Lord God, who turns around all situations. It is you who gives ways where there is no ways. It is you who appoints. It is you who consecrates. I pray, Lord God, that your hand be upon each one of us. Lay your hand upon each one of us. I pray, Lord God, that we become yes, testimony. Yes, Lord. That we become testimony. Yes, Lord. That your word of shirt, your word of truth, Lord God, yes, Lord. transform us to be testimony. Amen. And as testimonies, Lord God, we can stand, we can present ourselves. Yes, and the Spirit Lord. of God in us and the glory of Christ upon us shall speak. And your word shall be true and it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I bless you for the turnaround. Yes, I bless you for the breakthroughs. Yes, I bless you for the restorations yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I bind out every link and root of curse and debt and oh, in yes, the name Lord. of Jesus Christ. Amen. All the root of debt, yes. I bind them out, Lord Jesus. Yes, the Lord. mindset of debt, yes. I yes, break Lord. them out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, infuse in your children the power to conquer, yes, the power Lord. to own, yes, so they Lord. become owners. Yes, so they Father. become owners. Yes, Let Lord. them, Lord God, understand yes, and Lord. receive and receive and receive Amen. and receive and receive Amen. And receive and receive Amen. and receive Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Amen.